I come. Well, that was a fun trick, wasn't it, folks? Oh, so things are a little, uh, running a little smoother this time, right? Of course they are, because we're ready for another Tales from the Grim. Wait, that wasn't that good. Um, anyway, so we're ready for the second story uh, from uh, Grim Stories that we're going to read. I wonder what the next one's going to be. Let's see right here. Yes, yes, I'm reading it. It's the same book, so maybe I won't screw up so hard. Maybe I'll go back to school and get my master's in psychology. Yeah, I don't know. So uh, here, here's the book again. Okay, we're going to read the second story of the book. And it's going to be called The Giant and the Tailor. Ah, yes. Ah, I can't wait to read this one. It's going to be great. Okay. It might be a short one, folks. It might. You're getting, you might get lucky on this one. Oh, it's going to be a tale to tell. That's for sure. I'm sure you like the Frog Prince one. Anyway, so let's start it, shall we? Ah, I hear that nice crumbly crumbling, rubbing paper? I don't know. The Giant and the Tailor. Here we go. A certain tailor who was great at boasting but ill at doing took it into his head to go abroad for a while and look about the world. As soon as he could manage it, he left his workshop and wandered on his way over hill and dale, sometimes hither, sometimes thither, but ever on and on. Once when he was out, he perceived in the blue distance a steep hill, and behind it a tower reaching to the clouds, which rose up out of a wild, dark forest. Thunder and lightning, cried the tailor. What is that? As he was strongly goaded by curiosity, he went boldly towards it. But what made the tailor open his eyes and mouth when he came near it was to see that the tower had legs and leaped in one bound over the steep hill and was now standing as an all-powerful giant before him. What dost thou want here, thou tiny fly's leg? cried the giant with a voice as if it were thundering on every side. The tailor whimpered. I just want to look about and see if I can earn a bit of bread for myself in this forest. If that is what thou art after, said the giant, thou mayest have a place with me. If it must be, why not? What wages shall I receive? Thou shalt hear what wages thou shalt have. Every year, 365 days, and when it's a leap year, one more into the bargain. Does that suit thee? All right, replied the tailor, and thought in his own mind, a man must cut his coat according to his cloth. I will try to get away as fast as I can. On this, the giant said to him, Go, little ragamuffin, and fetch me a jug of water. Had I not better bring the well itself at once in the spring, too? asked the boaster and went with the pitcher to the water. What? The well in the spring, too, growled the giant in his beard, for he was rather clownish and stupid and began to be afraid. That knave is not a fool. He was a wizard in his body. Be on thy guard, old Hans. This is no serving man for thee. When the tailor had brought the water, the giant bade him to go into the forest and cut a couple of blocks of wood and bring them back. Why not? The whole forest at once with one stroke. The whole forest, young and old, with all that is there, but rough and smooth? asked the little tailor, and went to cut the wood. What? The whole forest, young and old, with all that is there, both rough and smooth, and the well in its spring too? growled the credulous giant in his beard, and was still more terrified. And the knave can do so much more than baked apples, and has a wizard in his body. Beyond thy god, old Hans, this is no serving man for thee. When the tailor had brought the wood, the giant commanded him to shoot two or three wild boars for supper. Why not rather a thousand at one shot and bring them all here, inquired the ostentious tailor. What? cried the timid giant in great terror. Let well alone tonight and lie down to rest. The giant was so terribly alarmed that he could not close an eye all night, for, long for thinking what would be the best way to get rid of this accursed sorcerer of a servant. Time brings counsel. Next morning, the giant and the tailor went to a marsh, round which stood a number of willow trees. Then said the giant, 
Hark thee, tailor, seat thyself on one of those willow branches, along of all things to see if thou art big enough to bend it down. All at once the tailor was sitting on it, holding his breath and making himself so heavy that the, that the bow bent down. When, however, he was compelled to draw breath, it hurried him, for unfortunately he did not put his goose in his pocket. So high into the air that he never was seen again, and this to the great delight of the giant. If the tailor had not fallen down again, he must be hovering about in the air. The end. Well, that's it for story two. <sighs> I love good stories, you know. They're always great. Let's put that one away. Put it away, damn it. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, I didn't do so bad. I got a little bit of the, uh, the voice acting wrong a little bit. But, you know, we read it up online. Anyway... I'm out of here. Powers invested in me. Yeah. Um. Oh wait, I just do it like this. Oh wait, wait, not this hand. Sorry. <laughs>